Darren Benson here for another video, and today I'm going to be doing another live rolling breakdown. Today I'm rolling with my friend Kyle, who's a blue belt. He's actually one of the only other guys in my academy that's near my weight. I think he's like 150. I'm like 140, 145. So I'm pretty tough on him because I like to show him, you know, what he's going to be capable of one day. He's still a blue belt, but he trains all the time, and, you know, it's, it's always fun to roll, and this is where you get to exercise some technique. In the past two rolling videos with him and Ty, I've been playing a lot more guard. I'm going to be posting some more videos with some upper belts and purple browns and blacks in the future. And I'm also going to be posting a lot more videos of me playing top. So in this video, right away, you notice I'm playing seated guard. So we don't have grip, so I'm technically at a disadvantage. This is a common theme for me. I always start my rolls this way. My elbows are just in front of my calves. My hands are in front of my ankles. And I'm not too far forward where he can just shove my head down. And I'm not too far back where you can just push me over. So I have a good posture. So that's important. The first thing you're going to notice right when we slap bump is my grip fighting. I'm always hand fighting, guys. I can't emphasize enough how you have to hand fight. Kyle's first mistake in this video, because I know he's going to watch it, is that he doesn't actively hand fight. And look how easily he lets me get grips. And that's not a negative on him, because I know a lot of people, white to black belt, who won't hand fight. And it's the most important thing when you start a roll. you got to hand fight. I should not be able to grab grips easily. So let's see. You see how easy that was? One second. And I was able to grab grips. It's it's a mutual respect thing, right? Kyle probably doesn't want to seem like he's spazzing too hard or anything. So I understand, but you know, you gotta not let somebody get grips. So we're still hand fighting. And here I made my switch into a two on one. So if you notice, I switched my grips, and I grabbed by his elbow, and he grabbed my wrist. So this was all a little plan. I wanted, I wanted to grab his elbow so that he would circle and grab my wrist. And when he does, immediately my right hand goes to his sleeve, and my left hand stays at his elbow so I can secure the two-on-one. So guys, <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time in the first five seconds, but these are the subtleties that upper belts use to trick you. I tricked him into giving me the two-on-one. Right, grab his elbow, circles, grabs my wrist. Look, I immediately go for the two-on-one. Boom, I get a good sleeve grip. I break my other grip. And I don't get the two-on-one and relax, guys. This is all stuff that I preach. I get the two-on-one and I immediately drag him. There's This is all happening within 10 seconds. So look, I grab my grips, break it, boom, elbow. And I kick his knee and I grab in. So again, right when I get my grip, kick the knee and drag. And I drag him into almost a back take. So we end up in this position. He's able to get back out, but now I have a really good half butterfly position. So I use the two on one to get to half butterfly. This is another common theme in my academy. A lot of people like to do the over under. In this case, obviously Kyle's a smaller guy, so it's, it's easier for me to use the half butterfly to stop his over under. But I use the half butterfly in this position to stop his over under. I still have an underhook. If you notice, my left hand is underhooked. So I'm just elevating him just to stop his, his over-under. Still have the half butterfly in this position. I have his elbow. If you notice, my right hand has his elbow. Okay. And here I'm going to use the half butterfly to sweep him over. So if you notice, I had his elbow with my right hand right here. I grabbed it, made a nice grip, and then I feel like I have enough room. If you notice, I stripped his grip just before sweeping. So let's look at that again. So I have his elbow. I grab his sleeve grip. I strip his grip by extending my leg and pulling, and now I sweep. So we'll check out that sweep one more time. For all you half butterfly junkies out there. And now I sweep. Now look, I swept him, and I kept my underhook the whole time, and I my back is not on the ground. I only fall to one shoulder, and I go straight into a passing position. And notice how my right hand is yanking his grip away, and then I'm going to cover his left hand with my elbow. Boom, covered it with my elbow. I have the underhook, and I dug it deeper. So guys, there's so much subtleties going on here. I'm a sucker for details. So I sweep, I have the underhook, boom, I dig it deeper, and now look, my head goes low. I'm immediately into a knee cut passing position, and I'm able to immediately connect my passes and knee cut. Just like in the beginning when I broke that grip, I immediately did the two on one drag. In this case, as soon as I swept, I immediately went into a knee cut pass. Kyle was able to retain. So I, I pass, he does a good job of retaining. 
and then I just sit up and hit an X pass. So immediately moving. I never gave him the opportunity to establish a guard, guys. It's important to note. I like to flow around. So when he retained guard, I was fine with it. So that X pass is something I teach all the time. So look, I'm already starting to predicate that he's gonna uh, try to flatten out and establish some type of guard. And my left hand is where it needs to be to X pass. Watch, watch how I get my pan grip, boom. As Soon as I stand up, he doesn't have the opportunity to establish a guard because I've already passed. And I go knee on belly in this case. So I keep a good knee on belly and I'm able to establish, but he does a great job retaining again. I stand up here, shake, 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 shake. I break his legs. So let's go back. So he gets closed guard. I stand up here. I posture up high, shake, 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 break his legs. He's looking for my leg. He gets a reverse De La Hiva. I'm able to get his sleeve and keep myself heavy and just knee cut through. So he tries to turn into me. I'm able to circle. He turtles. This is all textbook jiu-jitsu here. I take his back. And look, something happened in here that you guys didn't notice. I, re I achieved my collar grip in this transition here, right there. One more time. Right here, I already got the collar grip as I was taking his back. So I'm gonna get a bow and arrow. I did not take his back and then get the collar grip. I got the collar grip in the transition to take his back and then I just hit a bow and arrow choke. So again, I'm playing seated guard, hand fighting. Notice my hand positioning. He lets me get grips way too easily, guys. Right away, I pull in a single leg X, guys. So look, I get grips super easy. He puts his leg up. So the reason I wasn't gonna drag him this time or try because I always try to do drags is because he put that right leg up. The minute that he put that right leg up, he exposed himself for single leg X. I'm not sure if he was trying to stand all the way up or not, but this is something that he can look back on and notice. His leg is way too far forward, so this gives me the opportunity to scoot in for single leg X. How do I know I can get it? Because that right leg that's so far forward is super light right now. Boom, single leg X. So I'm able to get my single leg X. I switch to a modified single leg X. He tries to back step and I take his back. So this back take I just did is not something I do too, too often because I'm typically rolling with people that have 30, 40 pounds on me. Like in the last video with Ty, Ty has like 30 pounds on me. It's harder for me to keep my opponent elevated, but since we're pretty equal weight, he's trying to back step here. And when he tries to back step, I just have to get his right leg in between my legs now and I can take his back. So I'm keeping him elevated. Um, in this position, I've broke this down on my channel. I'll see if I can find it and link it down below, but I do have this back take. And look, see, I need to get his right leg in between my legs. So if you notice, my right hand is extending that collar as best I can. My left leg is extending as best I can. And I'm able to, look, right there. I got my his right leg in between my legs as stated. And now I just have to hip escape. And I hip escape and I take the back. So we can watch that full speed. So I pull single leg X. He goes to back step, follow, follow, get his right leg in between my legs. I got it, hip escape, and I'm able to get, get to the back. I put my second hook in. I've already dug my collar grip, I believe. I can't really remember, this was a week or so ago. Yeah, I got my collar grip if I'm not mistaken. I get his pant grip and I'm just slowly inching my way into another bow and arrow choke. I think in this case I'm looking for a triangle, but he traps my leg. He turns into me, and I think I was just trying to chain some submissions there. Kyle did a good job though of turning into me and getting out. So right here, he's not being aggressive enough on his passing. He let me establish my spider guard way too deep and now after establishing my spider guard he's gonna basically you know he's gonna be at my mercy because I'm using the spider guard against him he should have never let me get my foot on his bicep now I'm gonna push him over and I get to the single leg X I go straight into a modified single leg X and then I just do your basic hip bump sweep into a technical stand-up now he gets single leg X I push and then I back step into a reverse knee on belly I have an omoplata, this is something I do all the time, but I switch into a triangle. So when I back step here, because he's hugging my leg, because of the nature of the position, he's hugging my leg and I'm able to get into this omoplata position, 
but I find space for the triangle. This is just for him, it's because he's still a blue belt, it's just a lack of knowledge and seeing what I'm trying to do. So I'm able to switch into a good triangle, we roll, and then I'm able to finish. I prefer to finish the triangle than the omoplata, but they're both viable attacks, it's, it's personal preference at that point. So again, I start seated, hands over the ankles, hand fighting, and look, he lets me get the collar grip. This time he breaks it, does a good job of actively breaking the grip. I have double sleeve grips, and he tries to go hard for the knee cut. That was good, but I'm able to get the reverse de la Hiva. I'm able to extend him, extend him, extend him, roll underneath. I think he thought about a toe hold for a second. And this was more my experience on just staying glued to his back. Sometimes with this reverse de la Hiva position that you saw me playing that whole sequence, it's you really just have to stay stuck to your opponent as best you can. And I did a good job of that because I've done it a thousand times. So look, he shoots for the knee cut. Boom. I'm able to keep my reverse de la Hiva hook strong. My left foot's posting on his hip. I grab his ankle. I'm pushing him, pushing him, pushing him. So one more time here. Look, I'm pushing him with my left hand. If you notice, I just shoved him. One more time. Watch me shove him with my left hand and my left foot. Shove right here. I shove. Make the space to start going underneath. I go underneath. Okay, at this point, he's thinking toe hold for a second. If you notice his grips, his left hand's on my foot, his right hand's, or his left hand's under my ankle, his right hand's on my foot. I'm able to push his foot farther up and keep my left grip behind his knee really tight, which lets me get my knee in. He notices that the toe hold's not a good idea because he's about to get his back taken, and he tries to run away. He tries to run away to his left hand side, and I'm able to just stay stuck right here. He tries to step. I stay stuck, stay stuck, and I just followed with that hook. He does a good job of avoiding the hooks, and I'm able to get into like a north-south position and ultimately just continue to chase the back. So when I'm on that back hunt, I try to stay relentless with it because I know that there was some back exposure, so if I can keep the movement going, I can ultimately take the back. And then here I get the bow and arrow. Guys, in this position... Let's watch the sequence one more time. Notice how I get the grips for the bow and arrow, again, in the transition. I'm huge on getting things in transition. So we're here, he's getting out. I'm able to use that right hand underneath the collar to push him his shoulder off the mat. Boom, I get the grip. While we're transitioning, I never established. I already have a tight grip, he's trying to hand fight and it's just too late because my grip is really tight. Another traditional bow and arrow choke, my favorite choke. So, I think I get one more bow and arrow. I don't really remember. Again, seated guard, a little bit more aggressively seated. He's doing a better job of hand fighting here. I'm able to get the De La Hiva. Kind of steps into it. He needs to be passing much harder here. I have a De La Hiva. He should notice the threat. So, if you guys are watching this in your blue belts and stuff, don't let your upper belt partners get deep on things. He let me get deep on the De La Hiva, and now he's getting Bremboloed. So... Just wasn't a good idea. I'll go back and show you where he should have stopped it. So I pulled De La Hiva. Right here he should be moving. Right here he should be knee cutting, back stepping, long stepping. But he's a little bit complacent. Obviously the nature of Jiu Jitsu, you're learning as you go. He's, he's still learning. And he's kind of trying to see where I go. And I'm able to make him fall back and then go into a traditional brown below. I'm kind of hunting the back, but I'm also seeing where I can go with this. So I end up taking the back. And again, feeding that lapel as I took the back. I already got the lapel. And I have a bow and arrow with both lapels this time. So my right hand's on his left lapel, my left hand's on his right lapel, just barely. And then I'm able to get it there too. If you guys work on just getting collar grips and transitions for chokes, whether it be cross chokes, baseball bat chokes, etc., it's going to up your game so much, guys. So anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this roll and this breakdown. If you want to see more of this stuff, please comment. I enjoy doing it. I think that for me coming up, this was one of my favorite ways to learn. I used to watch Marcelo Garcia rolls. He didn't even break them down, but I just watched them or just people breaking down rolls online. So anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like this content, please comment. Let me know. Thank you so much, guys.